and three, two, one. Okay, here we are back with Under the Microscope, uh, Brandon Thorne and myself, John Ledyard, looking at a really fun matchup, I think, between uh, the Minnesota Vikings and the Carolina Panthers, and basically looking at the Vikings' defense against the Panthers' offensive line and, and, and some of the other aspects of Carolina's offense. I'm uh, just going to look at some of that stuff and show you guys kind of what we see uh, from a scheme perspective, from a technique perspective with some of these guys and things that Carolina probably could have done better, not only just in pass protection, but then also look at some of the ways that they excelled in the run game, uh, despite the fact that the the result obviously wasn't what they wanted on Sunday. So uh, we're going to start it. We're going to look at a we looked at all pass plays last year uh, or last week uh, when we when we looked at Everson Griffin against David Bakhtiari. Now we're going to look at we're going to look at a run player, a little counter run by the Panthers, and they do some interesting things, some interesting wrinkles off of, off of their runs that are going to be cool to look at. Yeah, so, you know, just kind of, a, you know, as you mentioned before, as far as the Panthers, you know, performance in this game offensively, they had 105 rushing yards on 28 carries, averaging 3.8 uh, per carry. Um, they actually outgained Minnesota in total yards, 306 to 211, um, outgained them in first downs, 18 to 13, but they had 10 penalties and three turnovers. Um, so that was kind of the story in the game, I think, for them offensively uh, more than anything. Um, I even broke down the penalties. I mean, you know, uh, Calvin Benjamin had two penalties. He One of them was a block in the back that negated a 56-yard touchdown to Whitlock, or excuse me, uh, Whitaker. Um, and then three of the offensive linemen had penalties, Norrell, Orr, and Remmers. Um Two of them were holds, and one of them was an ineligible man downfield. So they had a lot of uh, a lot of mental errors in this game, and I think you know ultimately that's what kind of bit them, you know, because they were able to move the ball decently in this game. Um, yeah, and and they gave up eight sacks too, and that can be we're going to look at some of those that can be attributed some to Newton, some to the offensive line, some to the Vikings and their coverage, you know, and some to their just their scheme up front. They got some great. Some great scheme up front, some great blitzes that we're going to look at today too that will be real, a lot of fun to, to see, I think, too. Definitely. So, yeah, this is the first play of the game, actually. Um, Carolina comes out in 11 personnel, you know, out of the gun, and they actually – they're just running a, basically a counter tray here. They're going to pull the right guard, Tri Turner, and the tight end, Greg Olson. Um, and they also are, are going to add in a little wrinkle here that they like to do that we'll see as we play this. But – um, as far as defensively, just focus on Eric Kendricks here, uh, kind of what he does or doesn't do here. And I think that's kind of a key aspect of uh, the success of this run. But let's check it out. So here we go. We got Ginn coming in motion here. I think that's – is that Philly Brown? That might be Philly Brown, but either way. Oh, yeah, excuse me, Philly Brown. That's just such an interesting wrinkle because everybody runs counter tray. I mean, for the most part, you know, most teams run counter tray. It's a staple of, of every NFL playbook. But what Carolina does is they take normal staples uh, of every, every, every NFL team's playbook and they add their own wrinkles, their own creative aspects to those. And that's, I think, what makes their run game so hard to defend. And you see it here. I mean, this motion and a nice counter step by Artis Payne kind of gets these – linebackers looking in the backfield and flowing like they may have to stop that jet if uh if um if newton decides to pitch it uh so there's a couple different things that they're setting them up for here i don't think it's an it's a read by newton we were talking about this before we went live i don't think it's necessarily a read by newton here uh, i think he's right. just giving this all the way but the motion um and the fact that carolina runs so many options you know make it possible for the defense to be thinking you know, oh crap! I could be screwed here if you know if I overplay this or whatever. So, we'll see how it unfolds here. Right, and because of that, you know, Philly Brown jet motion that they incorporate into this, um, Eric Kendricks and the linebackers. That that's kind of what enables this play to gain you know the yardage it does. Because you'll just watch uh, Kendricks and Anthony Barr. Just that little motion right there from Kendricks. Right. He's he's pretty much out of the play right now. And Tri Turner just seals them off, and you got a really nice game. 
and Kendricks, and this and this is playing to to the weaknesses maybe there. And you can see Barr almost remains flat footed so that he can recover. He, he trusts you know his, trust in his read and processing, whereas Kendricks right. kind of gets himself out of position and you know Barr a little more experienced I think too. But Kendricks yep. almost gets into Barr's space completely. I mean he gets so close yeah. to him. And I think, you know, it's tough to know linebacker reads all the time, I think, but I think Kendricks has to fill there and just trust that Barr's got that backside. Harrison Smith's out there, you know, in case that they they do run that option, and he's got to just trust what he's seeing in front of him as that guard pulls and the other guard down blocks and be able to fill that gap, make that read, because if if he doesn't and they do give the ball, there's no one there to defend it. And as you can see, there there is no one there because the offensive line does such a good job. Right. And just one other quick note on on this, and it's kind of a theme that you see throughout the game, um, where we'll touch on it a little bit, but uh, the Vikings are in a, a nickel defense with an over front, so the three technique is over here to the tight end side, and they're running away from it. Clearly, you have this open B gap right here with, you know, and Norrell is uncovered, so this is a good spot to run it to, especially if you could fool the linebacker, so it was just a Overall, just really nice design and execution by Carolina to take advantage of that um, first play of the game. Yeah, that's and then just, this next play. Sorry, go just, ahead. I was just going to say it's just fun to watch Carolina's run game. I'm glad you put in run plays even in, in a performance like this with eight sacks because the run game is there are variations they run in their run. It's just impressive stuff that is really, really difficult to defend and really difficult to prepare for uh, throughout the week. Right, and the thing about it is is it's a really basic run game with a ton of wrinkles mm -hmm. implemented in that just gives a different look, which kind of reminds me of New England in a lot of ways um, with Dante Skarnecki is doing there. I mean, they're running the same basic plays, but they're doing it out of so many different looks. And right here we have counter tray, right guard, a different tight end this time is pulling. Um, they're in 12 personnel instead of 11 personnel. This is still in the first quarter. Um, the defense is again in a 4-3 over. Um, well, they were in a nickel over before. They're in a 4-3 over now because of two tight ends. And we're going to see kind of a similar result. But watch Eric Kendricks here. And he's he's right here. Play it. See, and it's interesting that he audible there. I wonder if he saw the over front and saw this open B gap and, and maybe did that. I'm not sure, but that, that would be really smart. I think that, yeah, that, that seems likely to me, honestly. When I watched it a lot for the first time, I was when you showed it to me the other day, I was thinking that that was probably what he was thinking. Yeah, I mean, anytime you have a B gap bubble like that, you, you want to get in there, and especially right. with Tri Turner leading the way. Right. Nice job of Kendricks to start flowing towards the action. See, without that that wide receiver jet, it, it makes things a little more simplified for the defense. But either way, nice block by Try. And Greenway makes a heck of a play from the backside. Yep. Yeah, Carolina blocks this extremely well, and that's the thing. Even when you make a good, a good read, you know, this is a di really difficult to defend. You know, Barr – Barr reads it pretty quickly and fills really well. Yeah. But you're just not going to win that battle against Trey Turner very often. <laughs> no. And this is Greenway over here. It, it looks like um, Remmers is working off this block to kind of cover, and he covers Brian Robinson, and, and Olsen just can't get around. And Greenway just kind of has a free alley there, and he just does a nice job of knifing through and making the play. Yeah, and so you can see that Kendricks, even though he, he kind of learned from that last mistake, and but without that jet motion, you know, it, it does definitely makes the read easier for him. And you know, bar filling, you could say, well, maybe he can wrong arm, but that's tough, I think, for him to think like that uh, in that situation. You know, yeah, but, you know, that'd be ideal, but it's tougher to ask your off ball linebacker to do that in that situation when a guard's bearing down and you're just trying to take on that block and keep yourself as free as you can. Right. All right, so 
this is an interesting play that got a lot of attention. Um, this is uh, first quarter with 151 on the clock, and this is actually a safety. But, you know, people were focusing on, you know, the left tackle here, and, and rightfully so. I mean, he gets beat pretty bad, but but um, there's more to this play that we're going to uncover here, and um, we'll, we'll see kind of how Cam Newton had plenty of time, and there was just nobody really open. Right here, I mean, Cam's in his drop. And we pointed out that this tight end right here is pretty open, you know, for a check down. Um, Cam doesn't do it. It, it seems like he's reading this guy because this guy obviously is going to determine if he can go to what looks like Kelvin Benjamin. Um, and he just kind of waits too long. And he has he has all day basically to, to kind of make his decision. And that's the thing. I mean, Orr gets beat pretty bad, and we're going to see that especially from the next angle. But – even when he does, I mean, Cam is just as flat-footed as possibly could be in this pocket. You know, you've got to wreck – I mean, that's, he can see this rusher, and you'll be able to see it from this angle really well. You could see the tight end open in the flat there. He's got a ton of space. He could potentially even pick up the first down here there. I mean, or his right foot never even touches – I don't think it even touches the ground. I'm not – it's hard to even tell what happened here, but it looks like it just – like say he gets leg swept, but no one sweeps his leg. <laughs> right. You know, yeah, he – Nah, that was just weird. From your perspective, can you say anything that might – I mean, I know he's coming out. It's an attack step, but I just don't know how that right – because it doesn't even – I mean, Hunter hits him, but it doesn't look like he really hits him as hard as Orr's reaction is. Yeah, it, it looks like he just wasn't expecting Hunter to be that stout at the point of attack, and yeah. um, he just he just loses his feet. I mean, I think it's just a kind of a – a freak thing. Yeah. Um, and it, it just looks really awkward, obviously. And uh, it makes it seem like, oh, my gosh, man, Cam got killed by the guy who killed Orr. Right. But, you know, there's just more to it here. I mean, it, for one, it's a play action. So we know, you know, an offensive lineman play action um, pass, they have to sell the run. So he's going like he's going to run block him. Mm -hmm. um, and then he has to s transfer into basically a pass block and mirror him. Um, fails at that but play action so now here's cam he's reading the field right now and he has a good you know few seconds here to to make his decision this is a really good pocket from mm -hmm. basically here over i mean it's very clean and even to the left i mean this is a ton of space right even with your guy getting beat that badly, and then Norwell comes over, just gets a piece of Hunter, slows him down a little bit. I mean, the rest of the offensive line did about as excellent a job as you could possibly imagine in this situation. I mean, look at that. Uh, Trey Turner right. just completely washed down that side. Remmer stood up. I f don't see who the edge is on that side, but I think he tried to spin moves at Robeson. Yeah. He stood that up. I mean, everybody did their job except Orr, but still, Newton's got to – I mean, he's, he's flat-footed back there. He's got to get this ball out. I mean, tight end's open in the flat over there. And he's got to see him right now. I mean, right. you know, uh, just out of his peripheral. I mean, he's he's you know bearing down on him, and he's it's not like it comes as like a big surprise. And if anything, he could scramble. I mean, look at all this space. Right. So there, yeah. there's several things he could have done. I've joked in the past that Newton really just doesn't even care about getting hit, but sometimes that's how he plays quarterback. Not not even when he runs the ball, but just in the pocket. There there just doesn't seem to be any internal clock at times. You know, obviously a great player, you know, one of the best players in the league, but sometimes he he allows himself to take these big shots because he's just flat-footed in the pocket and he doesn't process quickly enough or he just doesn't doesn't care you know it doesn't bother him. he thinks he can shake off the head and then make the play and I don't know what it is because he does do that from time to time maybe he trusts he's overly reliant on that but you, you've got to get the ball out in that situation I mean you're in your own end zone you know that was a momentum changing play I thought you know Carolina I think was up 10 nothing at that point uh and the Vikings got the safety got the ball back and uh from that point on it felt like Carolina's offense really struggled and you've got to overcome that but I think with Newton you know you can't take that sack in that situation or even risk it in your own end zone. And so, I mean, or gets beat badly, but you know, to me, Newton's flaw there is, is just as deadly. Yeah. I mean, and then from an offensive line perspective, four out of the five did a really nice job. So it's overall, it's a win for the offensive line there. I mean, granted, you know, one of the offensive linemen, his man, you know, sacked Newton for his safety. So I guess it, it, it's really a loss, but 
you know, all things considered, I think you got to put that one on Cam. Mm -hmm. You know. So this is actually the exact same play that they ran the first play of the game. This is in the third quarter, and I believe it's the first drive of the third quarter. So it seems like the Panthers, you know, knew they had success with this earlier and want to try it again, basically. And it's the exact same thing. And the defense has given them the exact same look. They're in a nickel front with an over defensive line. That B gap is, you know, B gap bubble. Eric Kendricks has it. And this is what I said earlier. Just watch Kendricks. This is the exact same thing. And Kendricks adjusts. And you'd love to see this from a, from a linebacker. That right there. I right. mean, he, he knows it. And it's, it's really cool to see. He doesn't take one false step there. I mean, not even a little bit. It's good. Nope. Yep. He, that was really nice. But now, <laughs> he fills he fills here. It's physical, but it's Tri Turner. I mean, it's just hard to you know what. There's just yeah. not a whole lot you can. And one of the things, if you run that back, one of the things the Vikings open themselves up to, I think, is Everson Griffin is often in this wide technique here. So those mm -hmm. that B gaps obviously open here uncovered. But Griffin being so far removed from the core of the formation because that's how they like to play him and, and play him in that wide nine technique makes him really easy to block and makes even – I mean, that space is even more wide open. So Kendricks has extra space to fill, whereas if he just kind of clogged this, maybe there wouldn't be as much of a gap for the running back to run through. But because Griffin is so wide, and that's why this is such a great play for Carolina and why they relied on it so much in the game, I think, is because – Griffin is so often in that wide technique, it just leaves a lot of space there. And even if Kendricks fills it and stands that guard up, there's so much space to operate in the running back and probably cut off of whatever angle Turner's blocking Kendricks from. Yeah, and I think this is kind of telling as well because clearly Mike Zimmer and the defense are putting a lot of trust in Eric Kendricks. You know, I mean, this, is, this B gap is basically his – and this space between the defensive line makes it very difficult, like you were saying. So there's a lot of pressure on him to perform at a high level versus the run in this defense. And I think most of the time maybe he wins this battle. You know, he takes it on low. I, I don't have a big issue. You know, Turner gets into his chest still, but I thought he turned yeah. a little bit to take that on. I mean, Turner's just an ex excellent block. I'm not sure how much you can rip Kendricks. I mean, you're giving up uh, how many pounds there. You know, it's just a very right. difficult play to make, I think. Yeah, that that's a good play by Kendricks, I think. You know, it's just a little bit better play by Turner. Right. I mean, you're not going to – Kendricks, you know, how many linebackers in the league are going to stack and shed Trey Turner in the hole? I mean, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So this one is a really interesting play because of what Minnesota does here. Their, their trademark thing that they love to do is take two the, – both the inside linebackers or two of the linebackers and sugar the A gaps right here. So this puts the center in a conundrum, you know, basically. Usually one of these guys is going to go, depending on how the center reacts, um, the other guy's going to drop. But this time they do something even a little more different where they're going to actually slant both of these guys to the left, and that's going to give Robeson um, a really nice alley to work in. Um, and, you know, a lot's going on here. We'll, we'll play it and we'll break it down, but... It's uh, it's pretty interesting what happens. And before you even play it here, if we look at it real quick, there's I think it's seven on seven initially because you know they think if Harrison Smith's coming, which he's kind of looking inside, showing blitz. So Carolina's got to respect that and make sure they're covered, which leaves Olson. I think that's Olson there on the right side, which leaves him in in the core of the formation. He kind of check releases eventually when Smith doesn't come uh, because it's six on six, but. Just the fact that Minnesota is showing that amount of pressure delays the number of receivers that are going to be out on the routes because, you know, Whitaker and Olsen both have to respect that that may be the number of rushers coming and they both might have to stay in to even up the numbers count. Right. So the, there's those linebackers slanting in. And really, you know, the right guard, the center, and the running back do a nice job here. Right. But they're just in a position where they can't win. Right, it's it's a phenomenal scheme. I tried to look up the name of this uh, this twist, and I'm still waiting for a couple people to get back to me on it, maybe to see if we can figure it out. But with both linebackers slanting those a gaps, they're they're obviously opening up a gap for Robeson to exploit here with his rush. And Khalil actually does a phenomenal job here. You and I talked about this, but he washes Kendricks down, and then he recovers enough. 
I mean, this is almost an impossible situation to be in, and he still gets a good amount of Robeson here. You know, he washed Kendricks down, rough day for Kendricks there, and then gets enough of Robeson kind of right on his hip there. You yep. know, if we're just looking at that play, you know, I'd say, you know, to Khalil, that's just one heck of a job. And Forrest Whitaker, too, with the pickup, uh, to run bar kind of up the arc, get on his hip. You know, that's a tough block to make, and you're undersized, obviously, but. And Barr almost kind of gives up here. I mean, I think the whole point of right. this, and I think Barr knows it, is he just wanted to free up Robeson. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. not in this. Exactly, yeah. You know, he's just like, okay, I did my job. It's good, you know. And the key here, I think, ultimately, Tom Johnson right here at the three-tech over um, Andrew Noel right here, mm-hmm. He, it, they're basically um, big on big right here, Noel with him. So it's just one-on-one, and that – he he beats Noel here with a nice inside counter. Um, and you can see Tom Johnson, if you just go back a little bit in that frame, you can see Tom Johnson's left hand get right to Norwell's chest there, like right inside where that chest plate and his armpit meet. And he's yep. got a little nice little hold in there. And he does a little push-pull with the swim, more just a pull than, any, than anything else with the swim, gets him to lean down just a little bit, then swims him. Tom Johnson's one of the best – Sub package interior rushers in the NFL. Nobody really knows who he is, but he's probably one of the best pass rushers, pure pass rushers. Not a not an elite run defender, but a pure pass rusher guy that they can bring in in these types of situations with the lead and uh, in obvious passing spots, blitz scenarios, and he can win one on one matchups against a guard who's pretty freaking good in Norwell. Um, that's just a great luxury for Minnesota to be able to have, um, and he does. I think he really creates this here. And, you know, Everson Griffin does a pretty good job on the outside as well but to me even with all that minnesota does here you know does robeson get home i don't know i don't think so khalil's you know kind of gets enough of him to knock him off his path this really to me comes down to it's great scheme by minnesota carolina does everything they can on that uh the right side of their offensive line but that left side just you know you can see griffin get up under or drive him back just a little bit it's not terrible but newton kind of rolls out he gets that arm free gets a hold of him yeah, I mean, we put some of this stuff on cam or whatever, but this right here is just more of what Minnesota did. Yeah. Um, and really, Tom Johnson is the key because mm-hmm. if he's blocked there, you you would think that cam would be able to escape somehow. Right. Um, it's quite possible. But, yeah, it was just a really nice individual job by Johnson and just a schematic job by the defense there. So this one I wanted to highlight, you know, they're in empty, obviously. They're still on 11 personnel. They got Olsen to the right there, and then they have a running back out wide. Um, And, you know, empty personnel uh, is obviously a dangerous spot for a quarterback and a lot of pressure on the offensive line. But Minnesota only rushes four here, and I really think that Cam could have avoided this, and he should have. And this this winds up being a a sack over here, uh, Michael Orr. Uh, versus Everson Griffin. So uh, another Michael Orr kind of sack to his detriment. But still right here, this is this is a really nice – so Cam just hit his back foot here. So the ball should be out. The fact that it's not, okay, now he needs to know that he needs to move um, because he has all the time that he needed to, to hit the back foot and make a read. Nobody's open. So either you subtly move in the pocket or you bolt, and both options are available here. Right, and it's certainly not a great job by Orr. You know, no. I, I would probably be a little bit more uh, blamed to him than maybe you would. But I mean, I do think Cam needs to help his O line here for sure. You can see Orr though. I mean, Griffin just yeah, does Orr an awesome job. That bull rush. I mean, he gets. I think he gets under that right armpit of Orr. Gets yeah. him off the ground. And, I mean, he takes probably three steps here on one foot. And if you get an offensive lineman in that scenario, it's pretty much over. I mean. So I, I do think, you know, I'm not saying this is 100% on Cam, but I mm-hmm. do think 100% that Cam could have done something right. to help Orr here. Yep. I agree You know, that. I mean, he, he clearly could just sidestep to the right or bolt out of there. I mean. You know, he, he's just, I think he, his, like you said, his internal clock is just a little delayed. Right. You and know, in that's a game a, like this where you, I mean, you kind of know at this point in the game, I mean, you've already taken a, a decent beating. 
that you're going to have to be helping out your O line. Just, just they can't win these one on one matchups, especially on that right. side of the line. You know that left side. You know, so to, to be kind of aware of that throughout the game, and and mm-hmm. this isn't a quick thing. You know, Griffin, he gets or on skates for sure here, but I mean, it's still bull rushes are a little bit of a slower developing rush uh, because then you've got to disengage too. And he, he kind of <laughs> Griffin is a is a beast at uh, sacking the offensive lineman and the quarterback together, and he almost did it there. <laughs> um, and Robeson uh, just deserves credit there for just an excellent hustle play from the backside because I really thought Remmers pretty much had him blocked, and, you know, he just kept going, kept working. And I think so. It was created yeah. by Griffin, obviously, because Newton had to scramble once Griffin got a, a hand on him. But, you know, Remmers, you know, for the most part, his, his technique, is his posture isn't great there, I don't think, but – no, he. I mean, his hands, Way you know, high. slip for sure. He's not able to to create leverage with his hands here completely. Robeson, I mean, that's a really nice block, but you know, he's passed clearly way past the pocket, uh, or at least the the spot of the quarterback. Yeah, um, it's definitely not perfect by Remmers, but like we always say with offensive line play, sometimes you just got to make it work. Your hands don't get inside; just got to find a way. And I thought he found a way well enough there, and you know, Robeson just kept working, and obviously. You know, Cam couldn't find anyone, and I thought Griffin kind of created that with his disruption from the from the left side. Right, and here you know not to not to jump on anybody's back too much, but this this is a interception here um, by Cam Newton that is one hundred percent on him. Um, so you know I think people, especially with the Panthers, for whatever reason, I think because Michael Ward just had you know a bad reputation in Baltimore towards the end there. Um, so people just thought like, man, how can you have a starting left tackle like Michael War after what he did in Baltimore? But overall, I think he's been a solid player. Um, and I think the reputation kind of stems from that with this offensive line. You know, everybody knows they're a great run blocking team, but, you know, it seems like whenever the offense struggles, especially Cam in the passing game, it, it just automatically goes to the offensive line. And this is just another example of kind of showing that it's a little more balanced than than I think people think um, as far as where, you know, who to blame for what. So Orr's almost getting beat up the edge here, but he does a nice job to recover. You know, Griffin shows yeah, some nice, nice bend here. But Orr really, I mean, he's in control here, stays in face, gets on that's his perfect. shoulder. Yeah, he rides him up the arc. That's what you want there. Yeah, he's, you know, he has a great pocket. Yeah. This is just a bad, a bad interception. I mean, right. you know, not going to kill him for it. You know, everybody does it. But and here's the same play. You can see, I think it's Tom Johnson again inside. He does beat Ryan Khalil here. Forces Khalil to hold him. You know, another little push pull with the swim. I think uh, Khalil holds him, but he's not really a threat to Newton. So at that point, you know, no. it, called or uncalled, it doesn't really matter for Newton. You know, at that point, he's kind of stopped. Trey Turner's blocking him with his hip there. <laughs> um, yeah. But I mean, this is this is a good pocket, all things considered. In the NFL, this is a good pocket. You, you know, you got to be able to, and look how much room to escape to his left. I mean, but he just seems like he kind of locks into that read, doesn't move yeah. off of it, doesn't move his feet, and just makes a poor throw in a window that was never really there. Yeah, I mean, you know, Remmers is getting pushed inside a little bit here, um, but I mean, he he does a good job too. I mean, you, you can't expect a guy to. You know, just completely neutralize a rusher for this long, right? Um, and all he has to do, he, I mean, he could clearly scramble for, I don't know, five yards minimum, maybe twenty, who knows? Right. But all he has to do is just sidestep to the left. Yeah, I think what's frustrating here too, if you're if you're watching the Panthers and you're a Panthers fan, is that, you, like you said, Newton has the ability to get out of this situation and make things a lot easier on his offensive lineman. You know, this pocket gets a little bit cramped. He takes two steps to his left. You know, you can see it's only three man rush and Griffin's going up the arc. I mean, if you can sense that as a quarterback, you take two steps to your left, you could have another several seconds to throw, you know, given the blocking that's right here. I mean, everybody's to Newton's right at this point, you know. So knowing that kind of stuff as a quarterback, I mean it's it's quantified as pocket presence. Um, but that kind of stuff is so key to playing quarterback. And I think Newton is a great player, but I think that area of his game still needs a lot of growth. And while it has not been a great start for his offensive line, though not the whole group, but it's, I think or especially, you know, he struggled with Denver too. You know, a lot of people do. I think he can do more to help them out, and I don't think all the sacks that are necessarily accumulating right now are on them. You know, this is the same group across the board that was excellent last year. 
you know, and obviously they struggled in the Super Bowl against Denver, but I think Cam can do a little bit more to help these guys out. Certainly they've got to fix some things, you know, or has struggled. He's got to fix some things. Um, but I do think that, you know, Cam can do more to assist this group and to get himself and his receivers, you know, his legs are such a great weapon. Use them a little bit more, have a little more presence in the pocket and know when you can buy yourself times and when you can create offense outside of structure, which is one of Cam's strengths. But lately, I feel like he's relied more on his pocket passing, and I wish he would be more of the natural player that he he was, you know, even last year where he played more that way. Yeah, it's, you know, it's such a fine balance when, when you got a guy like Cam Newton, you know, who has such physical gifts and, you know, escapability and, you know, being able to, you know, get out of the pocket so easily to not fully you know, do those things, but sort of subtly do them. I mean, that's a fine line that, you know, only the the premier guys really do. You know, like we mentioned Drew Brees, Tom Brady, guys that can just kind of move around in the pocket very subtly, makes their offensive line look much better, um, helps them out, and it also buys time um, without actually bolting the pocket. So you gotta you got to kind of, I think, harness some of that stuff that you have as Cam Newton, you know, as a player, but still – you know, kind of, it's just the, the finer aspects of playing quarterback that, you know, just could be developed a little bit. And I think, you know, the offensive line um, would benefit greatly from that. But, you know, like you said, I agree. Michael Orr has been the weak link of the offensive line, but all things considered, he's, he's probably an above average run blocker and probably a below average pass blocker. And it kind of right. evens out to about an average player. Um, the interior three are stout though. And, mm. You know, he, he consistently has room, you know, to move. Um, well, the but, placement yeah. of that throw is poor, too. I know we're talking about line play, but the placement of that throw, I mean, even if you're going to make it, it's got to be on Ginn's outside shoulder leading him to the sideline. You know, with Gam's arm, maybe you have a small chance there. You know, I still yeah, think it's Remmers pretty well covered. Yeah, getting but. into his space right there, I think kind of forces him to could take some off of it here. Right. You know, and it was just he shouldn't have made that throw. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, all things considered, Cam's a great player. Obviously, it's just we're we're breaking it down to such you know fine detail that you know it may seem like we're nitpicking, but um, it's just little things you know that I think accumulate and build themselves up into you know this this perfect storm of you know the offense struggling. But there there's a lot of moving parts here you know on each play, and um, I just think it's a little more um, nuanced than people want to give credit for with the Panthers offense right so some of those issues I think basically what it comes down to is some of the issues are fixable um, just in terms of the amount of sacks they're giving up the amount of pressure they're giving up if Cam can be a little bit more aware and maybe Mike Lore needs a little bit more help we'll see uh, moving forward you know he did play well last year I think like you said I think he's a pretty solid run blocker and so they like to have him for those reasons um, but pass protection yeah I mean he's probably going to be a little bit of a weak link. Pittsburgh has a similar situation where Villanueva, I think, is overall a solid player, um, but you know, pass blocking is probably going to be something to you know for a quarterback to have in the back of their mind. You know, when they're throwing that, you know, you may need to move the pocket a little more than normal. Um, you know, not going to just get beat clean, you know, and give up you know uncontested sacks, but you know, are probably going to be typically in a little more trouble than the other side of your line will be. And so, um, right. this was a fun matchup. That we could we could have done so many plays from this matchup. I think we just did eight or so, but um, it, it was just a fun matchup. Uh, the uh, Carolina's run game is always fun to look at. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to look at them again later in the year. We've looked at Minnesota. We looked at Everson Griffin last week. We've looked at their defense now twice. Um, they've got some just incredible talent in that front seven. Um, they're going to be able to defend the run really well this season, I think. Um, and they're deep, you know, deep enough to be able to get after the passer with a big stable of, of players. Um, you have three edge rushers that a lot of teams would kill to have in Griffin, uh, Denell Hunter, and um, Brian Robeson. And, and so it's a fun crew uh, to watch for sure. And so this was a fun matchup to break down and uh, look at some ways that maybe Carolina can help themselves a little bit moving forward, but also look at the way that you know, Minnesota is a threat, period. Uh, even if they struggle on offense because this defense is so talented and the scheme is so good um, to get these guys in positions to win. Definitely. Yeah, man. I I think, you know, the key with Minnesota is you got all these great players and you got one of the best um, scheme, 
you know, defensive coaches in the league. And when you pair that together, that's, that's what we're seeing, you know, I mean, he's scheming guys open or, you know, free, you know, to pressure mm-hmm. the quarterback. Um, and then you got guys that can beat people individually and it's, yeah, it's a great, it's a great pairing for sure. And they're, they're definitely a top three to five defense. And, you know, we just, you know, showed a little bit why. Yeah, absolutely. This was a fun under the microscope. We'll have another one for you guys next week. We'll, we'll put up the poll. Uh, we usually probably put up the poll Sunday night, and then we start working on the tape and then hopefully get it out to you guys. We might be able to get them out to you guys by Tuesday. I got kind of overloaded with work, and so we had to push it back um, to today. We're recording on Wednesday. Hopefully it's out for you guys soon. Um, you guys can uh, can check this out and uh, let us know what you think. Uh, send it around to people, You know, get some traction on this thing. We had a, a good, great response uh, to the last one, I think thought um and this one's a little more team oriented um so that'll be cool for people to check out i think and you know let us know what you think things what you think we can do better and uh always you know that stuff's always well accepted by us so uh fun uh talking with you guys and we'll do it again next week thanks